again, thank you for coming. Our guest speaker for the evening or for the afternoon is a very special person in her first year here in Columbus, Georgia with the Columbus State Cougars, Lady Cougars basketball team. She was able to win the Peach Belt Conference title, regular season, and the Peach Belt Conference tournament title, as well as the Southeast Regional title. Over 30 games she won in her first year. And she's the bulls of the community. She's a dynamic speaker and a heck of a motivator. Please help me welcome Coach Anita Howard. y'all. Can everybody hear me? Because that, that's aggravating my ears. So. <laughs> um, so I'll stand back here. Y'all go ahead and enjoy your food. Usually I ask for all ears and eyes on me, but right now your mouth can be moving and your eyes need to look at your plate so you won't spill on your dress. First off, I want to say I was watching everyone, um, all the student athletes, walk and get their food. And so I noticed the attire. And so anyone that knows me knows I love fashion. And so first, I want everybody to give these young ladies a hand because they look fabulous. <laughs> now I gotta thank some special people. First, I gotta thank Mr. Dale and Mr. DJ for having me here at Sports Vision, this, this banquet. Anytime anything is being done for females of any kind of capacity, in any kind of capacity, I'm always there because I'm a female myself, of course, and I believe in female or women empowerment. And so I'm glad to hear Dale change his pronoun from girls to young ladies, but sometimes I just say divas, or I might say lead hers, L-E-D-H-E-R-S, leaders, like females. Um, and so that's, that's what we try to empower at our team. And so I want to say thank you to them, too. Got to thank God, um, our family. We live by God, family, then our job. And so today, um, I was just telling my boss, I have just gotten off the road from driving eight, nine, 10, 12 hours. And so I'm tired, but I wasn't going to miss this for the world. And so I got to thank a couple people at this table. Um, Todd, if you stand up, this is our athletic director at Columbus State University. Um, while I'm here at Columbus State, he hired me. This is my first season, for those of you that don't know. And so um, I'm thankful for him to see something in me, to let me be the third coach in the history of Columbus State Women's Basketball Program at CSU. Then I got to thank my wonderful staff. Some of them are missing today, but Coach Travis, he came from, with me from Virginia. No, you're only as good as your staff. And so Coach Travis is my full-time staff. He's been with me. Uh, for quite some time has traveled with me from different jobs and so he does all the things behind the scenes so that I can just kind of come up here go in the games and be ready to coach and not have to worry about stuff that goes behind the scenes and then also who's on my staff who's also my rock the family's rock um, my heart is also my husband coach T he's my agent he's my best friend he's my husband of course he's he's a uh, He's our post coach, and so he's 6'5", from Detroit, Michigan. He, he uh, practiced with the Detroit Pistons and ran their camps and stuff, and so he brought that to CSU, and that's why our post players were as phenomenal as they were. Sorry, Coach Travis, he's our guard coach. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, before I get my players, i got to thank Mr. Greg Hutchinson. He's our director of university relations at CSU. And so everything that we've done this year, he's been right there in our corner backing us, marketing and everything for our program. So I'm thankful for him and his camp and what they do. And then last but not least, I have two young ladies here with me today. And so as a coach, um, you're only as good as your staff, but you can't have a staff if you don't have great players. And so I like to pride myself on recruiting great athletes, but more importantly, great character kids. And so these two young ladies are two of our senior captains. One of them, Brittany Tatum, actually played at LaGrange High School. Where's LaGrange? She actually played at LaGrange Center. Of Brittany. And so as dainty as she is, she's actually the 10th player in CSU history to score over 1,000 points at her voice on the planet where her game speaks volume. And then also with us we have senior captain Gabby Williams. Not UConn Gabby, Columbus State Gabby. Now Gabby is one of the reasons 
Um, this year we were fortunate enough to be ranked number one in the nation for our field goal defense. So anybody that knows me knows I love defense, and if you don't want to play defense, you don't want to play for me. Gabby is the head of our defensive efforts at CSU. She's a one-man press. She's a, she's a team leader, but her voice is much louder than Brittany's, and if she speaks, everybody listens. And so we're going to miss those two young ladies, and the reason we're 31-2, and two, the reason we're Peach Belt champions, the reason, reason we're region champions, the reason we made it to the NC2A Elite National Tournament, are solely because of those two and several other players, but I'm glad that they're here to see the future of women's basketball come to fruition. So, if you give my table a hand real quick. So, I want to introduce my kind of circle, and this is a small part of my circle, because everyone in here should have a circle that they have. And if your circle doesn't have people that one, stand beside you and walk through things with you, through adversity, through the good times, through the bad times. If you don't have someone in your circle that's behind you, that's pushing you to move forward when, because we're all human, and sometimes we just don't have that oomph in us. You need that, that friend, that family member, that teammate to kind of push you to keep going forward. And if you don't have somebody in front of you that's challenging you to be greater, then you need to change your circle. You need to change your circle. And if you're that person in your circle that's doing all that, you need to change your circle. You need to change your circle because all of those people at that table and a couple of people that's missing today are, are those people. Someone who walks right beside me through everything. Someone who always pushes me to do to bigger and better when I'm feeling down. And someone who always I'm looking towards to kind of look after and I admire and I'm trying to get to where they are or even further. And so you got to know your worth. You got to know your worth. I tell my ladies that all the time. So what is your worth? Um, LaGrange, where LaGrange at? One of you ladies just stand up real quick. Come on, don't be shy. If I said, uh, how much are you worth? What's a number, a money amount that you'd say? She said priceless. She said priceless. <laughs> are you worth, I'm pretty sure no one is going to say one penny. And so I like to say if you're not worth, if you're worth more than a penny, why do you give anything else anything less, if that makes sense? And so if you're priceless, why do you go to practice some days, and I'm not, I don't know you, I'm just randomly speaking, why would you go to practice and not give it your all that day, if you know you're priceless? You understand what I'm saying? And so you got to know your worth to give your best every single day. Every single day. And if you have people in your circle that allow you to be a penny, then you, you, shame on you. And so I don't want anybody. Anybody know the rapper T.I.? Yeah. What's, his, what's one of his songs that I'm about to talk about? Motivation. Not motivation. But he doesn't want what? He don't want no mediocre. <laughs> he don't want no mediocre. I don't want anybody who's mediocre in my circle or around me. And so what I want to go talk to you about today, and I talked with uh, uh, this Kathy Cook. She kind of stole my shine a little bit in the invocation. But about being great, everything about me, everything about our program, everything about what I stand for is greatness. And so, in this room, there's a future full of great lead herds, <laughs> leaders. And so, whether you're a state champion, any state champions in the building, stand up. State champions. <laughs> whether you're a state champion or you didn't make it to the playoffs at all this year, you're still in this room because somebody thought something high of you to allow you to be a part of this elite group that's here before you today, okay? So you always got to know your word. Anybody know what the word goat means? If they say, she's a goat, what is it? Greatest of all time. Greatest of all time. Real quick, tell me someone who's your goat. Raise your hand. Stand up tight. I saw you. Who's your goat? Anything. Goat. Who's your goat? God? Oh, he's a ghost. <laughs> I don't know if anybody can talk that. <laughs> she said God is her, is her goat. A sports person, real quick. 
Somebody tell me who's their GOAT. Anybody over here? I'm not lead. Any basketball goat? MJ. Okay, my my goat. Can anybody guess who my goat is? I know they know. My goat is Westbrook. Westbrook. Not for what you're thinking about, but can anybody probably tell me why you think Westbrook would be my my goat? Just off what I said alone. His passion, his effort, his drive. You, in my opinion, and not to say Michael Jordan's not great, Muhammad Ali Lee definitely great, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, there's a lot of great people that make millions in the NBA right now, but Dawn Staley, she's a great female athlete coach, USA coach, just won a national championship this year, several greats, but Westbrook, in my opinion, I don't know off the court, he will never be outworked. He will never be outworked. Now, he shot 40-something shot last night uh, and had how many 43? 51. He, had, he shot 43 shots and scored 50 something points, but I don't like that percentage. But he, <laughs> <laughs> he wants his team to win because he still had a triple double. He still had a triple double. And so I, I like in myself, my goat, um, my goat is actually God too, but as far as sports, it's Westbrook because I don't feel like nobody's going to outwork me on any level. If I had to go against Gino Ariyama, who's the head coach at UConn, which I, I, I love to death because they're, they lost this year, but it was a fluke, but I'm thankful for Don Staley and winning. If I had to go against Gino Ariyama, I'm going to be ready. And so I want my players to be ready. But for them to be ready and me to be ready, you got to have a certain mindset about you won't be outworked. I got to know my worth and what I bring to the table. When I interviewed for this job at CSU, I told him exactly what I wanted to do. And we didn't win a national championship. But we did everything else. I told him we was going to win a Peach Belt, a conference championship. We did that. I told him we were going to win 20 plus games. We won 31 games. And so you got to kind of speak it into existence. Because I wrote down a quote here, and at the beginning of our practice, we always have something that's called soul food. And for most coaches, you probably do it. It's just an inspirational little moment where you have a quote or something that you start practice with. Ours is called soul food. And it's food for the soul to start that day of practice. And every day, I read that quote to our team or that scripture or whatever it is. It could be a saying, it could be some tattoo they have on their arm, anything motivational, and they have to regurgitate. So today's soul food, other than the food you just, just ate, <laughs> for the student athletes, this is your world. This is your world. Shape it or someone else will. This is your world. Shape it or someone else will. So anybody, I always like interacting stuff, student athlete, tell me what it means to you. Regurgitate that. Now we got to have some leaders in here. Someone's got to stand up and not be afraid to speak. What does that mean to you? This is your world, shape it or someone else will. What if I said I had 100 bucks to put my new answer? <laughs> <laughs> You're looked upon by other students in the school, so you, you you should use your influence to um, spark like motivation for others around you and use it positively. Absolutely, y'all give her a hand. She said, as student athletes, you should use your your kind of your your light, your shot, your light on. I mean, you're ahead of everybody in your school just about. And if you want a state champion or if you're on a great basketball team, a great basketball program, you kind of lead your students, your peers. And so if you do the wrong thing, so say skip school, everyone's going to uh, think it's okay to skip school. Or if you see someone skipping school and you say, I'm not doing that, I'm not running after practice for you, then maybe that student athlete or that student will follow you. And so how are you leading your peers? How are you leading your peers? And it goes back to your circle. Are you the one that's in the circle that somebody needs to kick out? Are you that player on the team that nobody wants to play with? Are you mediocre, although you have the ability to be great? <clears throat> and so these are questions you have to ask yourself. Greatness is not always given. Sometimes you're born great. Sometimes you earn your greatness and you work really hard to be good at something. And sometimes you're thrust into greatness where somebody pushes you and you just have to lead and, and do something. Which person are you? 
I like to think I was born great. <laughs> I don't know, but that's just my mindset. I think I was born great. I like leading and developing and molding. And we were just sitting over here talking about it. I think I need media training because I don't really think I do post-game interviews how I would want to do them. But that's just me. I do them how I want to do them. And so I'm not letting anyone shape my world. I'm shaping my own world. And so whether I want to be successful and be priceless, or I want to be poor and unsuccessful, it's my world. Okay? And so, um, Urza, stand up. Okay, I can't give you money because it's illegal and I don't, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> For her to stand up, and I don't know if she stood up because I was going to give her $100. For her to stand up tells me that she's a leader. She's a leader. What's your name? Hannah. Hannah, where are you from? Uh, Northside. Northside, what position do you play? Um, I play softball and I pitch and I play outfield. You play softball and you pitch and you play outfield. We got, what was your record this year? Um, was it good or bad? It was really good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I do uh, want to give you something that's legal. <laughs> but I, I would assume that Hannah is a teammate that people want to play with. And so I know from all the different sports, you have that one teammate who is one lazy, who is probably late, who is probably selfish, who is probably entitled, that thing, oh, everything is supposed to be given to me, I'm coach's best, or I'm the senior, I have, you know, priority. But are you, are you that teammate? Raise your hand if you think you're that teammate. I didn't expect anybody to raise <laughs> But how do you know? If you had to be a coach, and you had a team, so say this is my team, three of them anyway, <laughs> and I want to coach a team that resembles or embodies everything that I stand for, what would my team look like? If they're all like me, they're going to be hard workers, they're going to be dedicated, they're going to be defensive dogs, and they're going to want to win at all costs. But all teams aren't like that. So if you had to coach a team that is just like you, what would it look like? What would it look like? Would they be lazy? Would they be selfish? Would they be bad teammates and have attitudes because I got to run this sprint again for her? What would that team look like? And so as leaders, and I challenge them all the time as the captains of the team, you've got to resemble what excellence looks like at all times. Not just on the court or on the field, but in the classroom, at a party. You know what's right, you know what's wrong. And so I like the student athlete who resembles excellence on and off the court. If I catch them doing something good. It could be a post on social media. Some of y'all post stuff and y'all are quickly getting yourselves unrecruited. Right. <laughs> for, the moment, for the moment, your post seems cool at the time. But you never know, and that's the, the, the great thing about social media is also the worst thing about social media is you can't take it back. You think you can delete it, but somebody done screenshot it. <laughs> somebody done screenshot it and sent it to the coach. Or just, I mean, it's, it's there in the cloud or whatever it's called. I don't know. It's there. And so you'll be surprised, and I'm just a little old D2 coach. You'll be surprised. I'm pretty sure everyone wants to probably go Division One which that's a whole nother conversation in itself. You want to go to school just to get a degree, honey. You want to have a piece of paper in your hand that nobody can take away from you. And so don't get so caught up. Don't get so caught up in D1, D2, D3, because actually I've coached at all levels, D3, D2, D1. And you know what? In my opinion, D3 has a strong academics. G D Division three schools have strong academics. And they, they understand the life balance of a student athlete. D1s, everyone want to go D1. And I think we have a couple of signees that are in, in if you sign or go on Division One, raise your hand. Or stand up. Show it. Show it off. <laughs> okay, so out of this entire room, and I, I know we have some underclassmen in here, but we have three D1 signees. Okay? And so... To get to Division I level, you do have to be elite. But to stay there, to stay there is a whole nother story. And so I have several of you D1 transfers on my roster this year and will we have next year 
Because one, either they couldn't do it. Two, they did something that got them kicked off the team because D1s is a business. You get it done or next. You get it done or next. And so you got to be mentally strong, physically prepared to attain and sustain that Division I scholarship or position on the roster. And it's not hard because if I would have said stand up if you had a D1, we would have had more people stand up. It's not hard. It's not easy going Division I. It's not. But there's, thank y'all sit down. There's so many other avenues that you can go and be great. There's many people in the NBA and the WNBA, leaders of the world, that didn't go to Division I school. And so I don't want, in my opinion, this generation is the entitled generation because everything is at your fingertips. You didn't have encyclopedias to go look stuff up. You probably don't know what that is. You can just ask Siri to write a paper for you or something. I don't know. But you have everything at your fingertips, and so sometimes that handicaps you. And so good old-fashioned hard work always gets the trick. And so something we live by in our team is called vitamin E. Are you a healthy teammate? So vitamin E is effort, which I love effort, energy, which I'm just, that's just who I am, and efficiency. You got to sustain all of that. So if you can have the Westbrook, and you know, Westbrook is pretty efficient, though. He had a horrible field goal percentage last night, but he's pretty efficient. <coughs> and so vitamin E is effort. If you will not be out work, anybody know Ray Lewis, mm -hmm. NFL player? Oh, yeah. He says on one of his YouTube things, you will not outwork me. He's a beast that you won't outwork. How do you stop somebody that does not want to be stopped? How do you stop somebody that will not be stopped? So if I had to save my husband's life, and this is a mountain, I'm getting over through as I got chipped through. I'm going to save his life because you're not going to stop me. I'm not going to give up. And so if you approach sports like that, if you approach your class like that, if you uh, approach your relationship, whether it's your spouse, are you a great spouse? Are you a great friend? Are you a great teammate? If you approach in every aspect of your life like you're not going to outwork me, You'll be successful. And success isn't about how much money you have in your bank. It's not about how much money you have in your bank. It's about how happy you are in your life, in your own skin. How happy are you in your own skin? Now, you might have some D1 signees that aren't really happy. But you might have a young lady that wants to sign D1 and no D1s are recruiting her. Be happy in your own skin. Be happy in your own skin. And so I kind of got off the couch. This ain't even what I had on this sheet of paper. But. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what happens when you go rogue a little bit. <laughs> but I just want to speak to the student, the female athletes in the room. And this is real talk. No, no, no negative for the men in the room. But the reality of it is, ladies, you know, we always got to fight a little bit harder because... As a female coach in the women's basketball profession, there's not a lot of us. Not to say that we're not qualified, but they just, just it is what it is. Men take up a lot of our jobs, whether they're sports, whether they're the presidency. <laughs> they take our jobs. <laughs> so, ladies, young ladies, divas, you have to be prepared. Last thing I'm going to leave you with is my five Ps. Or they're not five, my five Ps. I stole them, but they're mine now. Five Ps. Proper preparation. Does anybody know it? Prevent, I heard prevents, it. Piss, prevents piss, poor piss, performance piss, or piss poor performance. Proper preparation prevents <laughs> poor performance. Can y'all say it with me? Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Say it. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. <laughs> If you can remember those five T's, you will never have to get ready for anything. And so although I didn't read anything on this list, I was supposed to talk to y'all about greatness and all this stuff, but I was prepared to talk about whatever came on my spirit. I'm prepared that at the last second, if we need a play drawn up, I have something in my mind that's ready to go. We might not have practiced it, but I know my personnel, and I'm able to set them up to make them successful. So I'm prepared. I'm prepared that if I have a game and my daughter needs to be picked up from Columbus High because they got practice, 
I got a manager. I'm prepared. You're, you'll never catch me off my guard. You'll never catch me off my guard. But life is going to throw you speed bumps. But they're just to slow you down but not stop you. They're just to slow you down but not stop you. And if you are that type of person that a speed bump turns you around, you're going to have a long life. <laughs> you're going to have a long life. So as leaders, athlete, athletic leaders, use the game to get to where you want. Don't let the game use you. It's your world, remember? Shape it how you want. If you want to be successful and be a million, a billionaire, go after your dream. But you got to be prepared. You can't be outworked. You got to know your worth. And you got to strive for that. And if you can keep your mind focused this way and not worry about what he doing, what she doing, what they doing, you'll always be on the up and up. So one thing that you'll see about Coach Howard there's nobody that's going to outwork me. I'm going to keep on looking at Gino and, and saying I can do what he can do. But while I'm at Columbus, we're going to be a national championship next year. All right. <laughs>